Great to have you. So um, what, what really was the cause of the outperformance here? Some of these international partner deals, why did the business look better than the projections? Well, you know, I think it was a very solid quarter across the board for the company. And I think it reflects both uh, the stable uh, demand environment we face as well as the stabilization internally. You know, there's been quite a bit of turmoil at Doxan over the last year. And uh, I think we now have a new leadership team in place. They've been in the saddle for a couple of quarters and, and they're doing a great job, I think, leading each of the functions. Uh, so I'm very pleased with, uh, with the operational rigor and predictability that we were able to demonstrate in Q3 and hope it continues into Q4. Well, the real estate market has shown some volatility, overall business activity as well. How much of a threat did those macro uh, impacts pose to your business in calendar 23? Yeah, so I think we are uh, taking a, a muted look based on, on the macro environment overall. And as you point out, we, we did have a, a strong business in the real estate space. A lot of that, uh, the decline in the volume uh, in real estate transactions and mortgage transactions has already occurred. And so that's sort of in the baseline, if you will. Uh, and we're seeing strength in, in other sectors, uh, healthcare, retail, manufacturing, uh, that's balancing it out. We have a very diversified customer portfolio. On gross margins, they came in above the streets, expectations, above guidance. Is that a sticky impact? Is that going to stay that way, or does your spending have to come up, or do you fear that uh, the top line is going to come down in a way that's going to threaten that? Well, we, we are aiming to, uh, you know, reach our, our long-term guidance of producing, you know, 20, 25% operating income. And so we, we took steps to, to get into that position. Um, and I expect that we will continue to do that into 2023. Alan, uh, you were quoted as saying, I believe it's important to acknowledge where we have not executed well. Obviously, mm -hmm. I didn't join to run a lower mid-single-digit revenue company, so I'm pushing very hard to get to a different place. Uh, can you talk about what you would have done differently had you been in place before? Yeah, I think, look, it, it's hard when a company has the kind of, of uh, tailwinds that DocuSign had during the pandemic. It, it becomes a, a mad scramble to just try to fulfill every order. And that can become a distraction from a longer term activity. And I think that's partly what happened to DocuSign. Took our eye off the ball a little bit on, on both product development, on, on maturing our, our internal processes, on you know, managing our, our sales and marketing investment. And so uh, th that's a hard thing to manage through that, that type of volatility. I think key areas that, that uh, we haven't emphasized as much in the past that I'm pushing on, uh, one is really to improve our digital self-service motions so that customers of all sizes can place new orders, upgrade any DocuSign products online. That'll both be an improvement to our customer experience and create operational efficiency. I talked a little about the roadmap. Uh, we, we think we can go significantly broader. If you think about agreements, they, they, uh, what we did was we automated essentially the signing of existing forms. But in, when things move to digital, that's not usually where things stop. All aspects of agreements, uh, developing them, negotiating them, agreeing on them, and then managing them, I think are ripe for uh, improvement, uh, and we intend to focus on that. 